joining us today to remember Barbara Wood Denning. I am Reverend Dr. Lawrence Powers, and it is good to welcome you to Benson Baptist Church today as we remember someone who was full of life, but who we now celebrate as with Jesus, free from the pain and suffering that she had for so long. We are thankful for you joining us today. We gather today to surround Barbara's family with love and support as they mourn and remember not just today, but also in the days and months ahead. Make sure today isn't the only day that they hear from you. We gather to put our arms around one another, especially around this family, and to say to each of them, you matter to us. Your grief has reached into our lives. And we are sad for ourselves, but especially for each of you. We gather to celebrate Barbara's life today, to hold it before us as one utterly unique and significant life. There has not and never will be another like your friend Barbara, your mama, or your nana. We also gather to worship Christ, the one who has not only gone before us all in death, but has risen to a new life we are all able to share in as his followers. As we mourn Barbara's death, we celebrate the new life free from pain and sorrow that she is now experiencing, and the hope that we will one day see her again. Thank you for being present for the family in these last few days, for the ways that you will be present with them and those ahead. As we continue in this time of mourning, of remembrance, and of worship, let us pray together, ending the prayer time together, praying the words of the Lord's Prayer which will be on the screen if you need them. Let us pray. God, today we stand before the mystery of life and death. Help us to do this with dignity and honesty. As we celebrate the gift of Barbara's presence in our lives, we also mourn the loss that her death has left. Help us to draw strength from this time of mourning and celebration. But help us also to find solace in the promise that as with Christ, Barbara has risen from this death to resurrection with you. Help us to draw strength from the fact that she is not suffering, but that she is smiling in a place with you today. Help us to draw strength from the promise that we will see her again, that today is not goodbye, but see you soon. As we remember, mourn, and celebrate, we pray together in the way that you have taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in reading the words of the call to worship. You'll read those that are in bold or in blue if you're watching the screen there in your order of worship bulletin. They come from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends and family, we gather here this afternoon to mourn the passing and celebrate the life and resurrection of Barbara Wood Denning. Barbara was born July 8, 1954 in Harnett County to the late I.F. and Gladys Mae Jones Wood. She just celebrated her birthday a few days ago. She is preceded in death by her parents and her brother, Danny. For 67 years, Barbara spent as much of her life as she could caring for others, none more than her family, whom she loved very deeply. 
She was married to her husband, Mike, for 43 years. And they shared many beautiful memories from her gardens here in Benson to the sands of the beaches that she loves so much. Mike told me that on their wedding day, the minister looked out a window at the miles of fields beyond the church and joked 43 years ago that it was Mike's last chance to run. But we're glad that Mike did. Truly, this was a couple brought together by a God who knew what God was doing. Mike and Barbara were the perfect match, and they worked together until her very last breath. Mike and Barbara had two daughters, York, who was married to Thomas, and Mary Michael, who was married to Jason. Known to Barbara and others as the girls, there are a few things in this world for whom she would fight more than those two. She loved them deeply. There was no mountain in this world that Barbara would not move for her girls. Barbara also loved spending time with her good grandchildren, Lily, Charlie, Isaac, Anna, Lainey, and Cooper. I'm told that she especially loved riding around and singing with them in the car, though we're not allowed to say what songs they sing. In addition to these children and grandchildren, Barbara also deeply loved her nephew, Reed, who was in many respects like the son that she had never had, and as such has been known to her as her baby boy. Reed is married to Angie. Their children, Barbara's, their children, Barbara's great niece and nephew Ashton and Ansley John, were loved deeply by her as well. Barbara spent her life taking care of her home and those that she loved. She also served for a time as an accountant with Ray Mulkey Insurance in Dunn. In talking with her family this week, they reflected that using the word funeral to describe what we've all gathered to do here today was for Barbara not really fitting because saying goodbye to someone so full of life cannot be done fully with mourning so instead they said this is more of a gathering of a farewell party so today we gather in celebration to remember this woman who loved so deeply whose stories whether they were embellished a bit or not gave us all life and who was loved so dearly by all of us May we remember her in these moments of worship as we say farewell with tears in our eyes, but also with a smile on our face to remember this force of life that we were blessed to know. As we continue in worship, I invite our ministry intern here at Vincent Baptist Taylor Long to come and read our scripture lesson. reading from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through 8. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. The family who have asked two who knew Barbara well to share their memories uh, and stories of her. So, First, we'll have Hampton Whittington come, and then Lucy Black will come right after him. Barbara Denny lived a remarkable life, but she never made the headlines, which is good and bad. Good because the headlines are normally dominated by crimes or tragedies. 
bad because she did so many good things in her life that most people never knew about. Barbara's life was a life of service to others, her family, her friends, her church, and her community. During most of her adult life, she lived next door to her parents, Mr. Ayah and Ms. Battis. And over the course of time, she became their primary caretaker. After her mother had to move to a nursing home in Smithfield, Barbara visited her almost daily all the years that she was there to help care for her. She agreed to have one of her kidneys donated to her brother Danny when he was in need. And the only reason she didn't was because they found out she was pregnant with Mary Michael and the doctors wouldn't let her do it. She still wanted to do it. She was always one of the first, if not the first, to show up at a friend's or relative's door with food, sympathy, or words of encouragement if there was a death, sickness, or any other need. If she was your friend, you had a friend for life. And in turn, she had many friends that could likewise, she, she could likewise depend upon, and in the last few months, that has proven to be very true. Her greatest accomplishments in life sits here before me, her family. There can be no harder job in the world than being a mother. But she earned a master's degree in motherhood. Two very beautiful, very talented daughters, York and Mary Michael, who found some pretty decent husbands. <laughs> and six adoring grandchildren who regarded her as a second and much more lenient mother. As with most grandparents, they were the joy of her life. But she reached the pinnacle of her family endeavors when she took a skinny, would-be ne'er-do-well and molded him into the husband that she deserved. <laughs> He, like most husbands, would not admit it, but he is very happy that she did. As many of you know, Barbara loved music, but probably most of you don't know that she was a huge Jerry Jeff Walker fan. If you're over 40 years old and don't know who Jerry Jeff Walker is, then I invite you to come down front after the service and ask forgiveness for your lack of musical knowledge. <laughs> During the last hour of her life on this earth, shortly after midnight, during which time she appeared to be in deep sleep as she had been for several days, Mike told me he played 20 of Jerry Jeff's songs for her. And while the songs were playing, he noticed that she appeared to be smiling in her sleep. According to Mike, she literally took her last breath as the last of the 20 songs ended. One of the last songs that she heard was May Music Be Your Wings, which has a few lines that go like this. And if late at night you're feeling all alone, then let music be the wings to carry you back home. And on that night, shortly after midnight, the music carried Barbara home. After Mike convinced me that Barbara left some written instruction that she wanted me to speak at her funeral, and it took some convincing, it actually dawned upon me that several years ago she came into my office and handed me a sealed envelope and said, put this in my estate file and read it at my funeral if you're still around. <laughs> something she apparently found somewhere. I don't think she actually wrote it, but it is what she would say to each of us if she could. Unfortunately, she's having to do it through me. And this is what it says. You can shed tears because they are gone, or you can smile because they lived. You can close your eyes and pray they will come back. Well, you can open your eyes and see all that they left for you. Your heart can be empty because you can't see them. 
or you can be full of love that you share. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember only that they are gone, or you can cherish their memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind and feel empty, or you can do what they would want, smile, open your heart, love, and go on. So today, I choose to smile because Barbara was, was my friend.
When a child follows a rainbow with amazed eyes, or watches fireworks show off over the sound. When one of her granddaughters gets her first kiss and her first pearls. I'm sorry. When a clown makes a child smile during the Mule Day Parade, think of Barbara. She is there. When someone lets a balloon go and follows it until it's out of sight. When one of the grandchildren catches a big fish and has to show pop. When someone shouts to the music of the towns, sings along with Bon Jovi, Tom Petty, or Conway Twitty. Think of Barbara. She is there. When the seasons change and we celebrate the differences, from pumpkins to candy canes to bunny rabbits, when Jeffrey Searles works his magic with flowers and ribbons and candles, when the congregation sings old hymns on Sunday morning, think of Barbara. She is there. When at the end of the day you thank God for the day and its blessings, when you wake up in the morning glad to be alive in a wonderful world, when you drink your second cup of morning coffee or eat your bacon and egg sandwich, Think of Barbara. She is there. When you need a little hope and a lot of faith, when you need some advice you might not want to hear with a few Jesus thrown in, when you cross the new bridge over Topsail Island and whiff that indescribable aroma of sand and sea, think of Barbara. She is there. When you walk out these doors into the light of a July afternoon, when you drive away with your heart broken and empty, when you arrive home and feel that familiar comfort that coming home brings, think of Barbara. She is there. She will always be there. People like Barbara never really leave us. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, it's an honor for me to be here to sing today, and um, I just wanted y'all to know that all the hymn tunes that you heard during the gathering were from a list that York sent me yesterday that were uh, found in Barbara's Bible. So those, she selected all the music, even the prelude, which is very unusual. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
Good afternoon. We indeed are here for a celebration. Uh, but before I can begin, I've got to tell you something that just happened to me that has never happened to me in my years of ministry. My years of speaking at funerals. I have, uh, I came across a poem by David Harkins about 10 years ago. I thought that's a wonderful remembrance poem. It's, it's just great. And so as I was preparing my message last night, I thought, I'll include that poem. Barbara beat me to it. <laughs> it's the same exact poem that's been sitting there for how long? How long has that been sitting there? A long time. Uh, okay, Barbara won Ronnie nothing. <laughs> My goodness, I am blown away by that. But I believe that's the way God works. I believe God's got a plan. I believe we can't mess it up. And I believe He's going to see it through no matter what. And here's another example of that. You know, I knew Barbara for over 25 years. Her precious family was so good to me. I.F. and Gladys were good as gold to me, as was Danny. And in all that time, she treated me with love and respect and dignity. It's a song from about 25 to 30 years ago, written by a contemporary Christian singer, at least he was back then. He's probably old like me now. Uh, his name is Jeff Moore. And he was reflecting on what his life had been like and on how he would be remembered. One of the lines from the song wonders, will they say I loved my family? That I was a faithful friend when all was said and done. And as we sat talking with Mike and the girls yesterday, one thing became resoundingly clear to me. She loved her family, and she loved her friends. And now that all is said and done with her life here on earth, she will be remembered for loving her family and being a faithful friend. I'm going to be remembered for that, don't you? When it comes down to it, I can't think of anything more important for me to leave my friends and family than my love. I have read that where love is given, life is given. And I think that is what Barbara did. To every person she loved, she gave a part of her life to them as well. And we can all take a part of Barbara's life with us each and every day. Indeed, she did care for her family and friends in every way, always supportive, concerned for their well-being. She loved people. And I think people like being around her too. As we mentioned, she liked to volunteer for different things. Many times just being behind the scenes, not looking for credit, but for the satisfaction that what needed to be done was getting done. Like her parents, she was dependable and honest. Two other things that we can all hope can be said about us when all is said and done. Gave her great pleasure to work in the kitchen and cook way too much food for Mike. Uh, she loved her flowers, as they say. You know, her family is a bouquet of flowers, so they're still growing now and will continue to grow for many, many years. I know she's going to be sorely missed by everyone. Especially this family. One last thing Barbara told me once that she had the last quilt that her mother Gladys was involved in making at Holly Grove. I'm a pastor at Holly Grove. I used to quilt all our quilt ladies all the time. I hope she still had it. That could be a family heirloom for generations to come. Because as we said, family was very important to Barbara. When all was said and done. You know, I love the story of Jesus' birth. Christmas is a great story. But i got to tell you, I think I love Easter even more. 
See, the miracle of Easter was not necessarily the cross. It was the empty tomb. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of mankind. But that was not the end. It was only the beginning of our hope. He died, but then came into, alive again in three days. May I read from 1 Corinthians 15? This is Paul speaking. For I received, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve, and after that He appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of them are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then He appeared to James, then also to the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also. Today is different than all the days before. And we all realize that this family is in need of a shoulder to hold, hold them up, a hand to lead them through. I want to turn to Isaiah 40 as well and invite you to look no further than the hand of God. It says, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I've often thought, how hopeless must be the thought of having no future. Yes, we are to grieve. God made us that way. We need to grieve. It's the way he, he wants us to do it. We've lost Barbara, and everyone here will miss her very deeply. The days coming up are going to be difficult. There's going to be a lot of adjustment. But there are so many people who grieve and have no hope for the future because they do not know Jesus Christ. Let us not grieve like those who have no hope, who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord. I say, let us look forward to that great first day of eternity future when those who know Him shall all gather together forever never to be separated, never to know death again. Let me leave you with the rest of 1 Corinthians 15, if I may. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. He says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death, it is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is coming a day when there's going to be a grand celebration Barbara's going to be there. I'm looking forward to that. May God grant this family and all of us here peace and comfort in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And again, let me reiterate, uh, thank you to all the friends and loved ones who have stood by this family and have walked with them through this very difficult time. I know their hearts have been touched by the help and comfort that those of you have given to them. And I would also encourage you to continue your ministry to them and with them. Let's pray. Father, we ask now that you grant these loved ones peace and comfort in this hour. Make your presence known to them as you embrace them with your loving arms. Hear our prayer and answer them. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Thanks for <coughs>
we continue in our service, if you will stand and sing with us a song picked by Barbara for this occasion, I'll fly away. I'll remind the family you don't have to stay. The rest of you will. Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. 